Hey everybody, welcome to Drive Through Review number 440. Today we're going to take a look at Black Hat. This is a new game. It was on Kickstarter uh, from Dragon Dawn Games. It plays two to six players and it's a trick-taking game with a board. Uh, the theme is basically kind of like a Netrunner type of theme where you're hacking into different computers and stuff and doesn't really tie you into any sort of specific plot. You're basically trying to play tricks and then move or sometimes even not move on this board and you're trying to get the lowest point score. So you're going to get points for cards left in your hand so you kind of want to go out first but then you're also going to accrue points or maybe even uh, lose points sort of uh, from the board where you're at. So you're trying to position yourself, sometimes win, sometimes lose tricks. A very interesting game so let's go ahead and jump in and take a look at it. Now as I said the game of Black Hat is very much a hacker theme. In the game, each player is going to be wearing different hats, actual physical little hats, and it has a very digital look to the board and cards. Now here you can see the board, and you can see here the different colored hats, and each player will start with a hat in each of these two sections here, and then as you win tricks, you're going to have to move the hats. You'll choose one, and then you can move it down wherever the arrows show. So if I want a trick, I can actually go over here or over here, and there might be different reasons that you want to go different areas. Now at the end, of each round of tricks, you're going to collect a different amount of points. You can see some of these are actually negative points. And again, you want to have the lowest amount of points at the end of the game. There are some tiles that come with the game, and these are double-sided. You can see this one here, like so, and you can randomly put these out. There are actually different abilities in the game that will, you can actually fish them out during the game, and this will sort of change up the path and the makeup of the board, and so it doesn't get stagnant. And I should show you the score tracker here on the side, and this is where you're going to keep score, obviously. And again, the lowest score is the winner. And here are some of the different card types you can see in the game. Now, the main thing to note here is the Black Hat card. And there are two different cards here, and these are double-sided, so you can see you've got that there. So when you have these in your hand, players will know that you have the Black Hat card. Now, you just choose one of these. The other is just sort of variant art. And then you also have these cards here. Now these go from 1 to 13, you can see this is a 6, and this is the number that you'll be concerned about uh, when you play it, so the highest card, give or take, I'll explain that in a little bit detail, is going to win. So a 6 is kind of a middle of the road card, and then you've got all the way here to like a 9 and so on. Now there are wild cards, here's a wild card here, and these are considered a 14 when they play by themselves, but they can also be a wild, so if I played these two it would be a pair of 9s. Now the black hat card of course can also count as a wild as well. And the other thing to note on these cards is you can see this one has a value of 1, 2, 1, 0 in this case. And then of course the wild has 4 points and the black hat here has 5. Now that's the amount of points you're going to gain, <laughs> quote unquote, when you end the trick and you still have the cards left in your hand. So you don't want to have any cards if you can help it because these are going to add to your point total along with where your hat is on the board. Now you can see I've taken out some cards. There is a variant in the back of the rule book, which I recommend playing with It'll definitely after you've played it a few times, where you sort of tailor the deck and take out a certain amount of each value card uh, based on the number of players. That keeps the luck down uh, quite a bit. And you don't have very swinging hands, which you, you can kind of miss as well. Just speaking from experience, it's kind of cool to have sometimes a crazy hand. Uh, but if you want to remove a luck, you can just pare down and keep a certain number of cards based on the number of players. The rules are in the book. And you can actually see here, this is a card that tells you all the different sort of spaces on the board. Now, some of the spaces on the board don't do anything, but some do. So this one will give you a denial of service. And this one allows you to actually move a hat backwards. This one allows you to modify different spaces on the board. You have these little tokens here that are double sided. Here's minus one and then a plus one. So you can change that. You have uh, this randomizer here, which again allows you to put out a tile mid-game, which I don't really like, frankly, but you know, you can do it just for a crazy game. Uh, and then you've got these other ones here, this FBI server and the honeypot will actually lock in your hat. When your hat moves there, it's stuck. It can't move. So you've got to move your other hat. But the FBI server is this. It will give you control of this. So what happens is you can actually, as you win tricks, your FBI hat will be locked in that space, but you can move this down and then this will come onto the board and then start capturing and putting hats into jail. So if I captured this black hat here, he would be locked in there and start accruing five points every round. So it really stinks if you get caught. And this thing, I'll just tell you right now, I kind of 
Uh, I could go either way. I really like it sometimes and I like to play without it. Just be kind of, uh, you know, changes up the game. I don't really favor it or not favor it. I just, I want to play with it for a little while and then I get sick of it and then let's play without it and so on. Now, how do you run a trick? So let's go ahead and do this here. Now, one player is going to be dealt the black hat every round. It's random. What you basically do is you'll take whoever the current dealer is and you flip this up and then you'll count around the circle in the table, discard this card, and then whoever this lands on, you count four times around in this case, then you give that player the black hat, and then you'll deal out cards until everybody has 10. Now there is a variant, once uh, players get to a certain point in the game, then you only deal out uh, five cards. So basically what that means is, once a player gets in here, this is sort of this final honey pot. Remember you get stuck when you're in the honey pot. This isn't so bad because you're gonna accrue zero points every round, so that's not a bad spot to be in. Uh, but once this happens, then you deal five cards to every player because the game will end in a few different ways. But one of the ways the games will end is, let's say another player comes along here and they move into that spot. That will actually trigger the end of the game. So what happens when you want to play a trick? Well, you can lead one or more cards. If you lead a single card, then every other player has to play a single card. So maybe I'll play a four, and the next player plays a five, and then let's say the third and final player plays 11. The player that plays the highest card in this case, 11, will go ahead and collect this trick and discard it, and then they'll get to move their hat. Now you can also play a pair or more. So I could do two, three, four, five, six of a kind, if that's possible. And then everybody else has to either do a pair, so somebody could play a pair of eights, or somebody could slough off a card. So let's say I didn't have any pairs in my hand, but I had a 12 myself, and I could play that. Now I don't have any shot at winning this because I didn't play the lead sort of trick type, but in this case, the pair of 12s would win it. But I could get rid of this 12, and I would want to because this is worth two points at the end of the round, and I don't want that. I want, I want to get all those high point cards out of my hand. But let's say I wanted to take a different tack. Let's say I went ahead and did this, and I played that. That would be a pair of threes, because remember, this black hat is wild. But whenever the black hat is in play, then the lowest matching type of the lead type is the winner. So in this case, we led with a pair. So the only way that you can try to win this is with a pair. So we've got 12, eight, three. The lowest pair out here is a pair of threes. If somebody had tried to slough off, maybe there was a fourth player, they would play this too. This isn't available to be the lowest because it doesn't match the initial type here lead. They're just trying to slough this off and get rid of it. Now in this case, if this player won this because they have the lowest of the type, that's good for them. They get to move their hat on the board, but because they want it with the hat, they have to take this hat back into their hand. And that's bad, obviously, because it's worth five points at the end of the round. But then they have to take two other cards or all the cards. So the way that that works, if you win with the hat, you take the hat plus the amount of cards led in the initial type. So this time it was a pair. So I take the hat plus two cards. It can be any cards out here. Now you can also take all the cards, which I've never seen anybody do actually, but I'm sure there's a situation where it might work, maybe towards the end of the game when there's not so many cards in play. But if you want to ever take a wild card back into your hand, and these are useful obviously because they're wilds, then you have to take everything. You can't, if you do the onesie, twosie, choosing ones, then you can't take a wild. To take the wild, you've got to take them all. And it's risky. You can, you can set yourself up to abuse this to win multiple tricks after tricks, and that might allow you to move multiple spots you know, over and over and over again. But you gotta be careful because as the hand size starts to dwindle, as soon as somebody is out of cards, that's the end of the round and you may get stuck with, of course, the black hat, but any cards that you've been collecting this whole time sort of abusing that. So it's not something you wanna abuse, you know, to infinity. You wanna just do it a couple of times and then start to dump your hand and hopefully try to slough off uh, your black hat. And one thing I should mention here is if, let's say, this was the arrangement of the hats and I won as the white player, I don't ever move and share the same space as somebody, but I'll skip over whoever's there. So that's very interesting uh, sort of dynamic uh, you have to keep in mind in sort of the board state and where you might jump to. Now the game will end, like I said, when somebody hits that final spot there, or if everybody gets stuck. And remember, if you get in the FBI spot, you're stuck. If you get in one of these honey pots, you're stuck. And it's very feasible to get everybody stuck because also remember this jail comes out and let's say this guy was in jail like that you know, then that that hat is stuck as well. So that is feasible once you start adding all these different special abilities to the board uh, for everything to get stuck. And the end of the game can sneak up on you if you're not careful. So that is Black Hat. What do I think of it? Well, I really enjoy it. It's a very different trick-taking game. 
uh, trick-taking games are something that I'm sort of out of favor with for the most part. They seem to never really quite work as well for me as a ladder climbing game, which is a different style card game, kind of like a trick-taking game. This one's really cool though. It's very different and it definitely took us a few plays to sort of wrap our minds around the different strategies involved because you've got this whole thing of like winning in tricks and then moving your hat and thinking about where you're going to move because you might move from a spot that gives you you know one point or zero points to a spot that gives you five or you've got to maybe escape that little ring that the fbi uh, controller has to capture you and put you in jail if that's in play uh, so there's a lot of different things like that one thing that i didn't mention was if you're in a negative one spot you can actually have your pawn moved out of it if somebody wins a trick then they can move your pawn if you're in a negative spot uh, so it's very hard to kind of explain it without really getting into minutia, but the way the black hat card operates uh, is very, very interesting. And I just kind of have to take my word for it because there's very interesting ways to sort of play around with this and kind of manipulate the trick for a little while and then try to get rid of it. Because again, it is worth five points each round. So that can really be a lot of points. Um, then there's, there's just a, a myriad amount of different situations when it's good to get rid of it. You play it by itself or you play it in combination with other stuff. And you, maybe you get the FBI and you try to like drive in and then capture everybody in jail and then really kind of hose everybody up that way. But you got to have a hand to kind of support that as well. And you got to learn about, you know, what the different hands mean. And there is a substantial difference between sort of the no luck game where you kind of pare down the deck based on the number of players versus just throwing everything in. It really kind of reminds me of Six Nymphs that way if you've played that, where if you have the whole deck in there, it's kind of a free for all and can be kind of wild and fun. Whereas if you pare it down, it gets a little bit kind of number crunchy, I guess is the right word. But this is less so because you still don't deal out every single card. It's just that you lessen the potential for those like, you know, you can't have six of a kind. Um, well, yeah, you'd have to have like all the wilds and stuff. It'd be pretty rare to have, you know, five or six of the kind hand in a three player game. And you've, you know, when you've pared all the cards down. So I like that better though, where it's pared down because it's a little bit more methodical and you have to plan a little bit and you, you make some better educated guesses that way. So it's really cool. I like the look of the game. You know, it's very bright and colorful. It's got an interesting theme in terms of like hacking, you know, then you kind of, you kind of hack into the FBI and you kind of like become the man, you know, and then you're hunting down the other hackers, which is kind of funny. And there's some interesting end game dynamics and stuff. And all of the different tiles and different special abilities are really going to kind of change up how the game operates, uh, you know, based on if you just play that sort of vanilla board at the beginning. So definitely recommend it. Um, my only kind of caveat would be is it can be frustrating in a good way. Now, everybody that I've played it with has really enjoyed sort of the frustration of that, like sort of getting caught in situations that you didn't sort of fully plan out or somebody had a card that you didn't expect or they expected, you know, you didn't expect them to play this pair or something. So you can get kind of caught with your pants down. But I think the luck of the deal we felt has really sort of evened out over the multiple hands. Um, so there's a little bit of sort of push your luck there with, you know, again, using the hat and everything. Um, but I would definitely take a look at this. If you're really kind of into trick-taking games at all, this is definitely one you gotta look at because it's very different than any that I've played for sure. So definitely take a look at it. Thanks.